Okay, so we're back to doing development here. Now, I did take a bit more of a break than I anticipated. Ended up ba helping my brother bathe his cat, and the cat is royally pissed at me. Yeah, cats don't like to be bathed. At least this cat doesn't fight you when you take give her a bath, so that's good. Anyways, um, last video we worked on the access system here. We got things synchronizing and loading and stuff. Uh, right now we're kind of pretty much using fake data to actually it's not even fake data because it probably is real it probably actually is saving but because we have a different player every time we log in it's going to not save that information we'll go ahead and just check to see if it is saving that will be a good indication that the uh, save system is handling it i don't see uh, oh there's an access system here access profile okay cool so we do have profiles here um it's reading from the wrong file though, because it should be in this folder here. It's not, it's in this folder. But we'll hit that up here later. If we actually open these up. Okay, yeah, we can't uh, we can't look at those. These should just be MBT structures, but I need an MBT viewer to look at them. Well, we'll deal with that here in a bit later. Right now we'll go ahead and load this up and I'll show you what we've got and where we're kind of heading. Um, if I actually open up my GUI thing here, because like I, I do have a plan set up and a bit, bit of lost of train of thought here. That's the reason why I'm pausing a little bit more is I'm trying to think of where I was a couple or about an hour ago, I think is what it was when I took a break. It would be production, volts engine. We don't really have a lot of notes on all of our mods. I need to start getting in the habit of writing down everything. The only thing we have is we have a, a white paper on MJU, which for those who go on white paper that has nothing to do with race or anything, uh, it's a terminology used to describe a paper that's designed to sell people stuff. I have no clue why they call it that. Uh, it was explained to me at one point in time. Uh, what this is, I'll open it up real quick, just to show it off. It's uh, a document that we started working on to sell the concept of use, utilizing Minecraft JUnit in everybody's mods. Uh, we ended up not distributing anything because it's not finished. We just have a couple examples in here and that's about it. It's, it's really underdeveloped. It needs a lot more work. Uh, we have like thing, we have documents of assets I think we want to implement. What else do we have in here? That is empty document pretty much. There's a volts engine pitch, which is uh, another thing we're working on to sell people the ideal. We're actually going to come back through here and rewrite this whole thing. Uh, yeah, so you got content management system. That's still in place. Tile system is actually obsolete. Uh, loadable system still works. JUnit testing, that's actually part of the different system. Prefabs, yeah, we still got that. Access system, I actually need to do it. So yeah, this is uh, basically, we were selling it as a replacement to the bucket permission system. Uh, we still have the schematic system. Resource registry actually needs to be overhauled. And yeah, we have a whole bunch of ideals that are being implemented. Compile time code injection, we just uh, actually did this. Uh, it's not through the ASM system, so I think it's still noting the ASM system, but now this is a uh, code generation. So I have to go through and update that document. But the GUI, which is the reason I opened that folder and less stalling here. So we got this. Um, we implemented the buttons here on the side and we displayed the group strings. Uh, we do have more work to do. So I'm going to have to think of how to handle a few things here. And I'm I'm going to maybe redo this part. So what I was thinking about doing is doing drop down menus because that would be really cool, but we may wait till later for that. Right now, what I might do is you click a button to edit the group and that'll be it. So we'll do, uh, we'll do dialogue prompts and stuff to handle everything rather than me going out of my way to do really complicated BS. Okay, so if we hit Control and Grave Key, hit Refresh, we can see all the groups each one of these has. Yeah, it's working too. It's consistent. If we hit Refresh again, these should be consistently the same ID. So it's 41 at the end, so we'll refresh again. 41 at the end. Uh, the order of operations is not... Well, yeah, the order is, is going to be wrong, or it's going to be different every time it changes just because it's a hash map is what we're doing so we'll 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 set some sorting up for this here in a bit where we'll sort by i want to say sort by id because we sort by id with the best things and then it'll be the most consistent uh 
entry thing. We won't sort by names. Actually, to be honest, we aren't going to do any sorting at all. Um, we'll leave it as is. So what we're going to do is we want to change these to buttons. So we get some buttons we can edit. And we want to start doing some renders behind this to make this look so much nicer. So I want to figure out what this is. So we're going to do draw world background. Draw gradient rectangles, how this is handled. And we got to draw background. I is always zero as of 1.2.2. .2 .2. Uh, what is this used for? Don't know what's that used for. Probably Z, maybe. So we want to draw a radian rectangle. Okay, so we need to break this into parts. Actually, we don't need to break this into parts. We just kind of need to just do a divider here so we know what's going on and it gets a little easier to navigate. Be surprised doing something like this simple makes a huge difference. Okay, so we want to render our background gradient right, right, right here. And what is this one? This one's two colors, pretty much. I don't know why they're negative numbers. It converts them back to RGBs. Um, it's negative because these are probably alpha. So what we want to do is we need to get, look up some so color to RGBA. Let the RGB value say an occupancy of twenty percent. So we need a hex value. So we're going to need um, color to hex converter. I got a better idea. Um, this would be color A equals new color and what we'll do is we'll do one 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 oh it's not is it going to do its thing oh yeah it's going to do its thing it's just not rendering it okay so this we, we, essentially this has a collar will and what we want to do is up its occupancy do it here and we want to get like a dark gray, so we'll choose, and it'll, it'll edit our value, and then we can get our thing right there, which is nice. Um, so this is a gradient rectangle render, so we need an A and B color. So we'll go A dot get RGB. Hopefully that comes with uh, the alpha. And then we want to get B get RGB. If it doesn't, we'll just have to work with that. So we'll start with this, and yeah, we get a much. You see, there's a much different color now rendering now we just need to do our size okay uh so our button started at five five and then i believe it's 120 is the width and then we'll do height for the full thing so we go get a little border here okay we're actually just gonna make that go to the zero zero corner because it, it'll look it'll look better that way And then what we want to do is we want to bring the edge back so it's only it's a bit about the same width on the other side. Uh, we're gonna need to do like a big black rectangle divider line here. And let me resize this real quick to make sure it handles properly. Yep, it handles properly. Ah, words, words have never been my strong suit. Ah. Okay, 110. Good enough. So that'll be our system here. And we're gonna need to put a scroll bar in here. As you, you saw on my other systems, we'll have a scroll bar. We'll probably drag the profile buttons back a little bit. So let's go up to here. And I wanna say we'll be two pixels from the edge. Yeah, that'll work. Yep, two pixels from the edge. Cool. 
and then we just want a scroll bar on the side so we'll get that implemented here and then what we want to do what's make increment buttons oh, we're just going to add the buttons real quick so this will be uh, new no this will be GUI nine button nine pixel dot new up arrow and this will be ID we need an ID for it we'll do four for this one so we'll go else if ID equals four apparently the break I took didn't really help me with the fact that I'm just tired I'm trying to readjust my sleep schedule plus keeping up with the workload I've got is just not cutting it I'm going to have to take like a vacation one of these days. When I get this done, I think I'm just going to take a break, go to a park, just tire date, just at the park, doing nothing else. So this will be a uh, scroll up on profile, and this will be scroll down on profile. I doubt people are going to have more than 10 profiles, but the, the, the use case I'm thinking of is when you're going to have a lot of profiles if you're on a very large server and you have everybody adding you to stuff, which actually means I'm going to probably have to add a favoriting system so you can favorite profiles so they'll always be at the top and I'm probably going to have to add a search bar. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do that here. So to do add favorite to profiles so they sort to top to do add search bar. So that'll remind me because I'm going to forget if I don't type that down. Um, Okay, so we need this, and this is going to be 110, cat, no, cat, go, shoo, I know you want to get revenge on me for bathing you, but no, cat literally was about to jump on me, I'm not even joking on that, um, my button picks, UI button, 9 pixel, this will be up button. The reason why I'm, I'm storing these is we got to register them because I don't have uh, I don't have that magical system I have on my other GUIs where I can just go add button. And this needs to be this actually needs to be up here. And what we'll do down here is um, we need to actually be here first. So we'll create these, and these will be stored up here later when we're not running and doing stuff. Actually, what was that? Original request. I, I hate these emails. And also, I hate the fact your Yahoo app is horrible. Look at that load time. And if you click the email, it won't pop up either. This app is horrible. You wonder where the company's going, like, out of business. Is they're just... Uh, not doing anything. Yeah, I get these emails all the time. Look at that. Look how generic these are. It's like must strong core Java Spring Hibernate skills. What does that mean? It, they, they don't tell you what this stuff is. Uh, it's first I've seen Jenkins on there in a while. Elastic Search Preferred. I don't know what that is. IBM MQ through JMS. There's no there's no definition all this. A lot of this stuff is uh, industry specific. Like SOA is search uh, op optimization. Ah. I just got attacked by a cat. Actually, I think she was trying to jump on my lap. I think she's looking for warmth. She just got bathed. So she may not be actually intentionally trying to attack me. Looking, uh, miscapitalized the end. What these are, by the way, is these emails. You get somebody who's come to the US here and who wants to do job recruiting and stuff. And they get into the industry and they don't have perfect English skills. They don't have perfect uh, communication skills. But actually, I take it back. A lot of these I actually have met do speak English really, really well, but it's their communication skills that are not good. And I don't want to sound racist when I say that, but that, that that's my been my experience of it. Anyways, uh, so this would be, each one of these buttons is 20 tall. We got 10, so this would be 200 down, so it'd be 240 is where these will show up at. And then we want to register these. So I'm going to go button list dot add dot button. Hopefully that cat doesn't try to attack me again. She is looking, I think, for somebody to keep her warm because the cat already has problems with staying warm. Uh, when my brother adopted the cat, the cat had uh, a lot of issues with getting sick repeatedly. And our house is naturally cold because me and my brother like to be in a colder environment. We're just used to it. 
Uh, I need a uh, I need a full list here, so we're gonna we're gonna buff this list out. And I'm gonna do real quick because I'm just gonna make these two the same. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. I feel like the count from Sesame Street just counting out the numbers. We have six sixes. I, I, I've, I, the sad thing is I don't remember actually watching Sesame Street as a kid. I, I know what it is though. I've seen the show, but I just have no memory of watching it. I might have actually one of those kids never got it. I do remember Teletubbies though, that, which is sad when I, I admit that is that I do remember that show. Uh, but that'll give us uh, more default values to toy with, and if we reload, I can then see the list. And we actually almost got that perfect. So we need this to come up another 9. So that would be probably 31. That's good. And then we need to bring it back by 9. We'll actually bring it back by 10, so it's one pixel away from the edge. And of course, we'll have to reload this. Uh, there's only enough space for it to be just right there on the edge. It's actually, I think I need two pixels. So we're going to actually have to expand the GUI out a bit here. So this needs to go over, let's we'll say, four. Of course, I have to reload the GUI every time we want to look at this. Yeah, that's good, because we, we don't want it perfectly touching. And that means we need to bring this over by five pixels. I'm guesstimating, by the way, if people want to know why, where I'm getting these numbers from. It's a pity we don't actually have proper Java uh, GUI stuff. Is we could we wouldn't have to guesstimate. We would just set the size of the of the container. Because what we're doing here is we're we're simulating a container. We're saying here's our container and here's all the stuff that's inside the container. Uh, I don't have an example to show this. I wish I had, I wish I had something on hand to do this with. I do actually have something I could show though. Hopefully my client is not, I, I don't think my client actually watches these, so I don't think I have to care, but I always get that worrying thing is the client will see one of these videos and be like, hey, you're showing off these uh, these things and you're not supposed to do that. And although we don't have a contract of, of anything, so he can't actually tell me that, but it's one of those, I, I hate to lose a client over stupidity. So these are uh, FXML files. So these are what uh, designed to make GUIs without writing code. So if we actually open these, you hit edit with notepad. They're just XML files to define everything. I want to do this for uh, our Java GUIs down there, or for our Minecraft GUIs down the road, because this would uh, replace the need to update your GUIs every time you update to a new version of Minecraft is the goal. But uh, we have a container here. See how this container's in here? And then in here, nested inside this, would be a label, the button, and the progress bar, which doesn't show up. So we could actually disappear this. So we could hit disable. Um, actually, there's yeah. If we disable, disables the subcomponents. See, they dis like do that. I would like to be able to do this with the system over here. Disable everything by default. So we're going to be replicating that uh, on our Java stuff or on our Minecraft stuff here down the road. Anyway, so we got our search bars here. So we got our buttons here. They're not. They don't do anything though. Well, actually, they would do something if we implement the code for it. I guess we could implement the code for this. It wouldn't take me too long. Just gotta. Actually, I need. I need a. I need a ID system for scroll bars. Uh, so we just focus on getting stuff to render real quick. So we want to go Armory mod and go grab that scroll bar we made for the sentry. My brain's having a little bit of trouble concentrating today. Okay, set texture, reset texture bind. So yeah, we just want this whole section. I'm gonna have to prefab this. I'm gonna have to go through and uh, clean up, clean it up too. Uh, so this will be. We'll just throw this down here, and this will be float C. Um, so X start is going to be whatever value we have here. So it'd be 130, I think. Oh, this is not good. We don't have like a lot of data here. We're missing stuff. So we, we want to get our max scroll. Our max scroll is going to be 
uh, 10 minus our length of our array here. So it'd be uh, IDs to the profile IDs dot length. And it'll be whatever our scroll is. Uh, so we're going to do ID. Uh, ah, yeah, we'll just do this. That'll handle our system here. Profile IDs dot length. And theoretically, this should just render in its position properly. We'll have to change the height and stuff. Okay, it's right there, so we're off by a lot. I'm going to toss this right here. Oh, look how squashed that got. Our GUI is not going to be designed to be adaptable, because watch if I do this. Okay, Minecraft does have some handling for adaptability. In it so we don't have to worry too much it'll resize the screen as needed um i might take control of that code later because what i want to do is instead of this stuff moving ar around or resizing or scaling i may just want to shift the components around Th think of web page uh, actually this will be a good let's go grab so just use this page real quick so if we shrink this down you see how the components move as we try to shrink it that's what i'm thinking about doing and that might be much better handling than trying to let minecraft rescale our stuff uh, so we're in the wrong spot here. Our Y start is pretty bad. Um, I'm thinking 40. That's that's dead on actually. Okay, this one needs to be I think 20 over. Oh, we're getting close. I think it's 100. Was it? Right. So it's going to be pretty much whatever the same as that button is, which I think is 104. Good thing is about using the GUI screen is we don't have to worry about any weird shifting. Okay, it's the bottom height which is is going to be the problem here because this bar has a max height to it. There is a maximum size this bar can be. Or not. This bar is just god mode right now. One of these is the bar render, and one of these is, oh wait, wait, this is the bar render down here. So we're going to get rid of the bar render so I can see behind it. Yeah, see, we are missing a section in the middle. Um, 200 is a bit much, so uh, I think 150 is what we need. So we'll, we'll get the size correct here, and then we'll write the code to uh, render it properly. Dead on. That's the size we need. Okay, so in order to render this properly, um, we got to render the bottom bar, and then we need to go, okay, for some indeterminate amount of size. So we have to go int uh, sections equals total size divided by 2f. There's some math involved in this. Product of bait. I said you're like staring at my dog real quick and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to bathe my dog here cause she's attacking fleas. I'm like, crap, that's not gonna be good. Um, I've got a few things to take care of. So we got size rendered will be zero. We'll increment size rendered and that way uh, we'll have at the final call of this. So we'll do size dot uh, ceiling which will get us our max value and then we'll just have to work our way through this. And we'll have a handling so it'd be if s equals uh, sections uh, minus one this will be our last piece we want to render, and then we want to go actually just do an else statement here. And we're not going to be rendering our sections as 2f. What is our section size going to be? 20? We can do more than that. We can do 50. So we need to know how much our bottom height is. 
going to be final int. Actually, we'll do this way. Final int middle height equals 160. And then we're going to do the bottom is 20. And then we'll do middle height. That way our total size is maintained. And when we could draw the bottom height, there's a Y start location. It should be top height plus middle height. And we do some kind of value minus something. What are these two values? I think these are texture renders. Then we bottom height. Uh, we'll, we'll run it real quick and see what we get. Oh, that was an error. I forgot to send my call. See what we get. Uh, did that get bigger? That should be the same size, and that's not. Oh, because I think it rendered this. Uh, let me do this real quick. Okay. Yeah, same size. So, so we got we got our end caps, and now we're, we need to render our middle caps. So how this works is we go um, size rendered plus equals uh, 50f, which is our, our, our size. So we want to put a float here real quick. So float uh, section size equals 50f. And this will be prefabbed out, by the way. See, so we got all this junk code here. We... I got to go put this in a handler by itself. Weird thing is, this is acting like it's an integer, even though it's not. Okay, so we go size rendered goes up. And then what you want to do is add size rendered to this position. And then when we hit the final section, we want to get the remainder. So the remainder would be our middle height minus size rendered. And then it's got to be, it's got to be one of these pieces here. So there's, there's an actual start position. So this is our... That's a U, that's a V. This is our height. So this would be X, Y, with height. Our height would be remainder. And when we get to this section, this would be uh, section size. And then this is the bottom height thing is the weird part, because this would be a UV section and we need to Put a 20 here, I guess. It'll work. It won't be beautiful, but it'll work. It actually, we won't even notice a difference when we hit this part. Oh yeah, we're gonna notice a difference here because it's gonna not uh, proportionally render. Something messed up. Okay. Um, we want the top height. So our Y start is going to be our top height. So it's going to be the last spot we rendered on top. So we rendered 20 pixels down. Then we need our section size increased. Oh, section size. I think, I think that's what we need is section size on the UV. I, I feel like I'm... Okay, I'm confused. <laughs> What did we do wrong? Okay, I gotta look at what these are. Okay. Oh, it's UV then with height. Okay, that's where we messed up. So these section size, this needs to be remain. Uh, then this needs to be 20. And so does this need to be 20. Yep, there we go. It's working now. Uh, I need to colorize these just to make sure each section is rendering properly. So. Nah, we'll do that another time. I'll, I'll debug if it's rendering correctly. Because as long as the bar is running, it's that's all I need to worry about. 
Um, now we need this part. Okay, so that's our scroll bar. And I don't think he's ever going to be full size at length. If if he is, I'll, I'll recycle this code. So with this code window being, this will be, uh, we'll write something called render vertical rec with, uh, with caps. And you'll define the size of the caps. So each of the caps will be 20 and you'll define the size of your midsection. Or it'll it'll preview the caps for you or something. And I already have a horizontal version of this. I just need to make a vertical version because we're doing vertical renders. And then when you go to render the scroll bar, you'll you'll pop in your, your scroll position, your scroll bar size, and then your total scroll bar size. So you'll the scroll thing and it'll handle that way. Um, so we got that rendering. Uh, now what we need to do is exit real quick. And then I need to implement uh, scroll positions. So int profile scroll index equals zero. And then I need to catch two new buttons. My brain can concentrate long enough to do that. This is where sleep is important and I'm not doing it. And therefore I'm having trouble concentrating. Okay. I do need to disable the up button by default. So this will be disabled. Actually we do this next time. Up button, disable. And then we would do down button dot set enabled. If, uh, if our index or so profile IDs dot length is less than 10. Oh, no, wait, greater than 10. So if we have 11 entries, then it would be enabled, but if we have exactly 10 entries, then it would disable itself because there's no scroll capability. Um, we need to update those statuses every time we do things. So what we need to do is we come down here, we need to grab these. So every time we recreate the profile list, and we do that only when uh, we set up things. So this actually needs to be if profile IDs doesn't equal null. And that way we don't null point randomly. I'm actually going to change this to names. And what we're going to do is so if our profile names ever read in null or they were empty or something, uh, the whole system will just fail to function. And that will be what we want it to do. Put this down here so my brain stops going, hey, hey, that's in the wrong spot. Fix, fix. Problem with having minor OCD is that your your brain will constantly be like, hey, please go do this thing, please go do this thing, and it just pesters you until you give in. Uh, I'm missing something here. I need I need this class object. At least I'm happy my my I got my OCD under control many years ago. It used to be really bad. It used to be one of those people that actually was coming close to needing medication at some point to uh, keep it under control. And then I've got lucky and I figured out some methodology which just pretty much involved brute force, pretty much forcing myself to not be OCD, which sounds simplistic, but it wasn't. It took years. Um, what's, what am I doing? Profile, scroll index. So we'll do that real quick. So scroll, target, list, place, and then we want, we need, to name, we need to rename these buttons. These buttons are way too simplistic. So this will be <clears throat> a button profile scroll. Uh, no, I don't want to replace, I want, uh, Control F6. No, it's not what I wanted. Control F6 is build. 
I've, I, I'm having such a problem with sleep deprivation right now that I'm actually forgetting hotkeys that I use often. It, yeah, that was, that was shift up six. I just, I was hitting control. Man, I'm going to have a down day today if I don't uh, get some more energy. Okay, so what am I got? I got, uh, I got up button selected, so we're going to fix every up button position here. Up button. Up button. Then we need, we'll do this and we'll replace up with down. We'll probably refactor these names again because they're not exactly the standard names I use. And then on here, this will be uh, profile names dot length. So be, our max will be profile names dot length. Um, yeah, we're good there. And what we'll do is uh, if profile names equals null, then that's zero, and then it's that way. So that will handle any null point issues. So that means we have scroll functionality now. It didn't take us too long. We're 36 minutes into the video. I wonder if I might need to be dehydrated, which is the reason why I'm losing energy. Because I'm going through the different things that could explain why I'm tired. Uh, usually when I get tired and sleepy, it usually ends up just being I'm cold half the time. Or I haven't, I've, I forgot to eat. But the, there's another thing that's dehydration. Most people don't know this, that if you uh, start to get dehydrated, you actually start to become unenergetic. And it's somewhere, it's like 1.5% uh, is where you start to get dehydrated. And then 2.5% um, is where you actually get thirsty. So you actually can be dehydrated before you're even thirsty. Um... And you won't notice it's it's complicated and when i'm talking about dehydration i'm talking about being like slightly dehydrated where you just get a little bit of lack of blood movement uh, when you don't have enough water in your bloodstream your blood moves slower and when it moves slower you aren't as energetic you're not as focused you have trouble doing things which is exactly the symptoms i've got right now uh, only problem is i'm self-diagnosing which is something you're not supposed to do so Whatever. We'll just go with the idea that I'm tired and probably need to get some sleep. But I'm hoping to actually go through the entire day without actually falling asleep because every time I attempt to fix my sleep schedule, uh, somebody wakes me up. This is what happened yesterday. Yesterday I decided I, I was not going to get uh, I was not going to get up after I got to sleep, so I, I went to sleep uh, around sometime in the evening. I think it was like four o'clock, maybe even five o'clock. Then I got woken up at nine. I couldn't go back to sleep. And end up just moving around and everything. And the plan was I was going to actually sleep from 5 to 6 the next morning. So it would have been a long sleep schedule. I would have slept for like 11 or 12 hours. But if by doing so, I would have reset my sleep schedule. Because then I would have been back to getting up at 6 in the morning. Which is what I want to be doing. Because that's a really good time to get up. Because that means if I get up at 6, take a shower. Or actually do exercise, get food, shower do all my morning tasks, and then by then it's somewhere around 7 or 8 o'clock and I can start recording because then everybody would be awake and I, I'm not interrupting their sleep schedules because at least eh, other people in my house have better sleep schedules than me. Oh yeah, we got a nice scroll button and uh, both of our buttons are disabled. 4K. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <laughs> I missed 2. <laughs> I'm like, I shouldn't be counting to 10 from 0 to 10. I missed a number. That explains why the scroll bar is disabled. There we go, we got a scroll bar. Uh, the bar isn't moving, which is telling me some stuff's not quite working properly. Uh, we need to reinitialize our list here. Uh, we're going to make a method for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close it. I'm going to fix things and we'll reload again. So we're going to need to make a method called uh, reload. Reload profile list. And we were doing this in our packet code. So our packet code does this for us. or It does it doesn't do it for us. It just happens to handle it that way. Um, 
So right here, we want to go reload profile list. And we need to do a few other things too. So make sure our index is set up. We'll, we'll leave it there because that's a good spot to stick it. And then what we'll do is every time we scroll up and down, we'll reload our, our system. So reload and then reload. So that'll handle that. Then for some reason, oh yeah, yeah, because our render wasn't set to uh, use the scroll position. I had Im implemented a fake scroll position. Um, so this will be, I need to rename this to whatever we're using, which is, we'll just do it this way. Profile, scroll index, I'll copy this. Then do that, get rid of that. There we go. Now we'll get us our index properly, so we will actually do stuff. Why? Why is it saying? Oh, we get it. It's IntelliJ being slow. IntelliJ for the win. I love this software because it does work well, but at the same time, it doesn't work well. And this seems to be every piece of software I have almost. I, I I'm I wish some a company would just come around and just make a really 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 nice piece of software, really high grade, and we wouldn't have any it wouldn't have any major problems with it. And it's not something that's unachievable. People are like, oh, what software always has bugs with it, which is true. There's always problems with software, but there are softwares that exist on this planet that are such high quality that the bugs that you end up finding are minor problems. They're like extremely minor edge case issues. The problems that I'm seeing in softwares like this, like you go to Source Tree, Source Tree has a problem where it won't refresh. That's a major functionality flaw because its main goal is to give you a refresh on your list so that way you can grab your changes and, and synchronize them to the web. Um, and it works, it, I mean, it does work most of the time, but it's that it's, there's a, still a good percentage it doesn't work. And for those who'd be like, oh, but you just updated your source tree, they probably fixed it. Uh, I am using pretty much the latest. I actually reinstalled it here a couple of weeks back because I get tired of these issues and I end up reinstalling to fix them. I'm not going to synchronize our current changes right now because I'm going to rewrite that scroll bar system after I'm done with this video. This video is pretty much going to be implementing scroll bars and we'll do the uh, group buttons real quick. That's, uh, that's about it. I can't think of anything else to do right now because I need it. I definitely need to take a break. Longer than what my previous one was. Well, actually, I take it back. Probably not longer. I probably just need to go eat real food. Because my my breath just occurred to be a bagel, and the food I ate yesterday was a uh, pizza. So I haven't eaten actual food, which is vegetables and fruit and stuff like that. My protein intake's been pretty low. Luckily, I do take vitamins, so I don't have to worry about a lot of that those issues. The vitamins do take care of a good percentage of things. Okay, there we go. Our scroll bar is moving. Uh, this isn't updating. That's not updating because we aren't uh, we aren't utilizing the scroll index. So what we would have is we would have an actual index value. Um, this would be plus profile scroll index. Except there's a problem right there. Our max scroll is not set up properly. We would have uh, null pointed at some point. There we go. So we see the list is updating. So good, we implemented scrolling. Uh, next trick is to uh, do the group buttons, which I'm gonna go ahead and quit and we're gonna code up real quick because I'm gonna just do this as a, another profile thing here. So we're going to have a another protected void create group group list. Um, and what this would portray to is it would be like our targeting list we made. You would have buttons next to names because we're going to do the group names as just straight on names. You won't click the group to edit it. You'll have an edit button next to it. Uh, well, think of one of those buttons you should have next to it too. Yeah, so we'll have a add, edit nodes button, edit group settings, and then 
at edit users. So we'll have three buttons per, per thing. Um, I'm trying to think of how many groups we can do. I'm going to say we do 10 groups as well. And my phone just poked at me. Int random number. Oh, it's blue sunrise replying to me. Okay. He actually he's replying to somebody else. Yeah, he's, he was posting out like he had this problem where his he's running Python code. It took 18 minutes to run. And I was like, ah, oh, it shouldn't take 18 minutes to run. No, I think it's, there's something wrong with your interpreter. And people are asking questions back and forth, being helpful. Um, so this will be profile scroll bar. And what we do is create group list. No, actually, we don't need to create the group list unless we open a group. And then we want to do reload group list. And this will be every time we hit the refresh button. Well, actually, anytime we get a, for, wow, we'll, we'll figure out how to do this. Uh, right now, this will basically just uh, run through our button thing. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Okay, so we'll copy this. We'll go group buttons. And this will be a matrix. And we'll come down here and we'll create them real quick. So we'll go uh, group buttons equals new. And what we need to do specifically, we also need to go with uh, current profile doesn't equal null. So we're going to need, oh, what happened there? Current profile doesn't equal null. And then we'll make the we'll make the array. So it'll be new GUI button array, and this will be current profile dot get groups dot size, and then we'll need the number of buttons. So we said uh, edit group settings, edit nodes, edit users. So it'll be three. And what we also need to do is make sure that our group size is higher than zero. Uh, we also need more buttons on here too. Uh, we're going to need an add group button and that'll be about it. And that'll open up a dialog and you'll make a new group and you'll set it to parent group and everything. And for the parent group, we'll do some kind of drop down list, I guess. I actually won't do a drop down list because that'll be a pain to program. I can make it happen. So it's not saying I, I don't have the skill necessarily to do it. It's more of, it would take me a day to work it out properly to make it function inside of Minecraft code. Cause I would have to do all the back handling and what it would involve is you would, when you click the drop down button, you would below it you would render each box with a string over top of it then you would do a mouse over detection so if the mouse is over top of there and you left click and you do your hover state and everything so it'd be really old school OpenGL rendering and i believe i already have a drop down list in my game uh, so i could just go copy all the code from it technically but i don't want to do that right now so do this and we'll get our size and yeah, we'll, we'll leave it. Uh, actually, we're going to set this to eight. So we're going to need a scroll index for this too. So this will be int group scroll index equals zero. And we'll have to handle that separately. We're not going to do the scroll bar for that one in this video. We'll do it in the next one. At least I don't think we will. I'm, I'm one of those people that will change my plans if needed. Um, I don't like how that worked properly. I guess we actually, yeah, that's fine. I'm looking at that like that. My, yeah, my brain's not doing the whole two to two thing today. Okay, so this will be new. We're just going to use nine pixel buttons right now, and we're going to leave them empty. Yeah. So, so GUI button nine pixel because we got to go make the icons for these and we'll be new blank button and we're going to initialize the id so it'd be 20 and we're just going to do zero zero on these for positioning and this needs to be uh, zero okay be one be two and then our for x position is supposed to be plus nine 
and we'll do tool tips for these as well so but uh, that'll be then another video or I'll just do it later and I'll tell you how it works uh, so we need a y start position so we'll go int y equals zero and we'll do int x equals zero and this would be x that way we don't have to move the whole thing and we'll do y and then y would be plus i times 9 because the, the pixel buttons are actually we'll do spacing so make another thing called int uh, space and we'll use the same spacing we did last time so we'll, we'll pretty much make this look kind of like our sentry gui system i'm not going to be super inventive today um, even though i had this really nice gui drawn out the reality of things is they don't always look this way when you make them. You get these really cool things. You're like, oh, that's going to look so cool when I get in the game. And then you make it and it's like, well, the limitations of the software don't let things like this happen. And you then have to either do one or two options, fix the limitations of software, which is on the agenda to do later. But right now we have to work within the limitations, which is the second option. So this should work. We should get our buttons. Um, they'll be clickable. They won't do anything. And we need to set the indexes. And then we need to plus I on these. So we'll set up the button clicking for this later, but we just want to make sure we get everything rendering. And let's so create group list. And what we want to do is we don't want to like create it. We want to hit reload. And we want to reload when we load our profile. So I'm going to go load profile, um, do request. When we get our do request packet, and we're going to make a new packet system. I, I just thought about this, and this is actually kind of important. And so we're going to pack it here. This is a read packet. What we want to do is then make a, an identical packet. But this will be ID equals 2. And we'll go, okay, if ID equals 1, then we reload. If not, we don't reload unless we want to do things. So we'll go to do if ID equals 2, check if we need to reload only reload if user is not editing so we need to make sure if like the user is getting ready to edit things or getting ready to click a button we don't reload and then just screw all their stuff although i don't think we have to worry about it too much but you, you get the point we, we got to do some editing uh and then we should already be rendering the group ids so we already have them rendered we just have to match the spacing up um the spacing is actually 10 instead of 20 and we gotta get the positioning so we'll go ahead and run this and we'll get everything lined up first before we do anything else. And yeah, we're at 52 minutes. So we'll just make sure this is all lined up and then we'll call it into this video. I'll go take a break and then come back and then we'll do the button clicking. So you'll be able to, we'll, we'll do the button clicks, but we won't make the other GUIs because we have to make GUIs to be able to edit group settings and stuff. And right now what we'll do is you'll be able to add users to groups is the only GUI we're going to do this week. Uh, I'm not going to add the GUI for making groups. I'm not going to add the, the GUI for editing nodes right now. Or, or settings so you'll have default groups right now and then we'll have to go for the more complicated stuff later because there's still a lot of other work to do uh, so right now we're faking the access system so we're faking the list of profiles so we have to actually do a create profile system we have to make sure the save load system is working properly we then have to make sure the sentry guns respect this list so we still have to program the targeting for the sentry guns which is the most important part uh, then we got to get the f friend or foe system tied into this, which is another really big thing. Or because if you don't get the friend or foe system working properly, then uh, there's a whole other mess of problems that are going to come into hit play. Uh, what else is on the agenda? I still got to get updated to uh, the one eight. That's actually should be the priority, but I want to get the permission system running so the sentry guns are done. Uh, the, the goal for the update to 1.8 is I'm going to probably just update ICBM and get it updated and then I'll slowly update the rest of the mods. So we're going to use ICBM as the uh, the showcase mod for getting the new system running. So we'll get it completely migrated away from Minecraft and Forge code. And then we'll use it as a test bed for our 1.9, 1.10, 11, 12, and whenever 13 comes out, which is probably going to happen before I get fully updated. So we've got a lot of s versions to update for. So we'll get those all updated, we'll get those all running, and then we'll use ICBM to confirm that Volts Engine can run across all those versions. Because what, what has to happen is we gotta make a version per version of Minecraft for Volts Engine, which means then we have to do take the Volts Engine code and we have to split it into uh, Minecraft Volts Engine code and non-Minecraft Volts Engine code. So all the helpers need to be non-Minecraft based 
and then we just want the base fundamental wrappers and stuff and loaders to be using Minecraft code. It's a really big thing too, because if I can get I can get enough of the code split away from depending on Minecraft and Forge code, it won't matter what happens to Minecraft and Forge underneath my my code base. I can change for it. Anyways, we open this up. Scroll stuff still works. Anyways, we're gonna have to do reload. Okay, scroll button's disabled. Okay, so this is running correctly. Our buttons are nowhere to be found. And we should have reloaded group. So that shouldn't have been a problem. Reload group, which then runs create group. Um, I need to kill all the buttons. My brain just realized there's an easier way to do this than what I was thinking. So what we can do, rather than deleting the buttons, we can set them visible. So visible equals false. And then we come down here and we go, okay, Whatever our button is, we set it visible equals true. This makes it where we don't have to delete our whole button list. We go, if um, profile buttons doesn't equal null, and we do the same thing on our reload here. So we would have a matrix style action here, by the way. So this is a little different down here. So it'd be three buttons, and then it'd be a loop of button or it's what gy gy button to this would be an array that would be buttons group buttons and then this would be buttons and then you just said disabled and then in here we just have to make sure we're not recreating the button. So we have to go, okay, if profile buttons dot I equals null, and then same thing here. We go, okay, if profile buttons equals null. So we create, create if missing. I'm actually going to do this real quick. So we're going to we're going to kill this off, save and quit, so I can edit things real quick and uh, reload. Because if I if I get rid of these methods in here, we wouldn't be able to reload. And what I want to do is I just want to make one method for this now because we we've, we've decided it's no longer just a create method. It's now a, technically it's a reload method, no matter how you look at it. So then we want to do here. So I'm going to go okay if uh, group buttons equals null. I can hear my brother get attacked by the cat. I'm laughing my ass off right now. Um, so what we want to do is, I guess, check to see if which one of these is null. That seems a little stupid, but I can't think of a better way to do this. This would be a one and a two. There is there is better ways to do this, of course, but uh, this is my thought process. Is like, eh, this will work. I don't know why I copied that for. Because I have to do this anyways. So, zero. One and two. So we can set visible if it's it's used. That way we're not recreating the system every single time. And then we, if we group buttons is not null, we loop through and set them all visible so they're hidden, but they're still there so we aren't recreating them every single time. And that should provide for a much smoother piece of functionality. And what we'll do really quickly too is when you load the GUI, we'll go ahead and initialize everything, uh, but we'll just go like, hey, we're not using it all any of this stuff. So it'll just be gone. And one last thing we need to do is we need to do this. So we need to make sure that we're initializing the array. So if we go if uh, we want to do if i i is less than we want to make sure we set them enabled. If not, we go else. Actually, you know what? We're instead of doing this here, 
when we go to create the the GUI, we'll just uh, set them visible right here because that'll that'll work. Um, one, two. This needs to be false. So this way we can initialize our entire array. Same thing here. We'll go. <coughs> Set this disabled. And what we also need to do is profile buttons dot i dot set or display strings. There's apparently there's just no method for this. It just shows how Minecraft is designed. I'm gonna go else really quick, and we just want to set this to false. We don't need to reset the name. Oh, why did we skyrocket up there for? Oh. The false. Okay, we haven't done the add method for our stuff yet, and this will initialize this as empty. So we need to do the add method. So add would be button list add group. Or yeah, it would be this thing. And we'll duplicate this down here. Bit, a bit, a lot of boilerplate code is as it's called to get this stuff working. Uh, this all looks good though. Uh, we got to get our spacing correct on here. Uh, I guess this will have to do. And yeah, we should be good. I'll, I'll deal with this when we get to it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here, where I said noted earlier about dehydration, I'm sitting here drinking soda. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. I need to actually um, probably go find a container, fill it with water, and drink that instead of soda. And what I mean by container, I'm thinking something other than a cup, because the cups contain small amounts of water, and you have to refill them often. And I'm not energetic enough to go walk all the way up to the kitchen, fill a cup up, walk all the way back, drink it, because I, I can basically take a, a single cup and down it in one go. And for those that don't believe me, I have chugged two liters before, although I did puke the first few times I did that. I don't advise ever doing that. As other YouTubers may note this, I am a trained idiot. Do not do what you see at home. Except for the coding stuff, you can kind of do a lot of this coding stuff without much harm. Just keep in mind that use your brain, do your own research, don't take anything I say at face value. Because, yeah, I'm pretty much, most of the time, I'm just rambling on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Words. Using my uh, telemarketing training pretty good right now. Uh, w what I mean by this is, when I was trained to do uh, phone support and stuff, you were told you need to make sure you're speaking constantly while on a, a voice chat type system. So that way, whoever you're talking to doesn't think that the phone dropped out. It's the same thing with recordings. You want to talk a lot. You don't want to have silent moments because people will be disrupted by the silence. There needs to be some kind of something going on at all times. At least that's that's the theory. Okay. Uh, everything broken. Did... Okay, here's our buttons. We're just not getting them over here. Okay, so when we render our string text, because we can just use the string text as position, because we're not doing anything like GUI left or anything. The interesting thing is, I can actually go to my other uh, my other GUIs, and if I instead of doing the GUI left. I could actually use the, the coordinate plane system. I would just have to do a little bit more tw uh, tweaks and adjustments to it. Anyways, I need, so it's 130 by 50. 
Uh, except our x is actually not going to be 130. It's going to be whatever the string length we're going to decide is going to be on. But this will get us really close. Why is our profile list keep disappearing? We screwed something up. Yeah, because our profile list disappeared. Um, each one of these is 9. So we're going to guesstimate that 10, so that'd be 30, 60, about, we'll do 90. So we'll add 90 to this, so it'll be, be 220. Probably even do further than that, because look at all this GUI space we have. And those are still visible. So we have borked our code. That's good, though. We got all the groups here. Um, this takes up so much little space. Look at that. We, means we, can, we can list so many groups here. So we've got... We can do more than this. And it, it, when you go to resize... Oh. Oh, I broke it and everything. Yeah. Huh? Uh, array index out of bounds exception. But the array is 8. Uh, you know, we're actually going to make this like 14. And then what we'll do is we'll go real quickly and just make this uh, dot, uh, dot length. Words be a troubling me. Yeah, the more tired I get, the, the worse my English is going to get. Still going to say English is my native language, but it doesn't matter how many times I, I say that. It, the reality of it is that I actually do have trouble speaking English. I actually, when I studied Spanish, I had a I spoke Spanish better than I spoke English. When I used to know how to speak Russian, I could do that better, too. And I didn't actually know much Russian, just to note that. I, I used to hang out with a lot of people on EVE Online that were Russian, and I picked up a good bit of their language, and I used to know it. So I used to be able to, like, hold small conversations in it for a while. Might I note this, I was, like, 14 when I did this. Hence the reason why I can't speak it anymore. Same thing with uh, Spanish. I took Spanish in... I want to say junior high, nah, first two years of high school, I took three years of Spanish, so, I don't know, was it two years? Either way, uh, no comprehende e, no hablo espanol, which means I just said I know comprehend and I don't speak it. <clears throat> I don't need to actually go study languages though. It's really cool though, studying languages. It, it, the reason I find it interesting, even though it may not sound like it, because I have problems speaking languages sometimes, I like the concepts of language. And it has a lot to do with me doing programming. Because when you look at a programming language, it, it is a language. It, it is a spoken language where you're speaking to a machine. It may not sound like it, but it is just as complicated as a language that you would speak. Not as many words, it's much more simplified technically, but it does have the complex nuances. There are verbs, there are action tenses, there are stuff like that. Pronouns, nouns, everything like that. And when you put both of them into the machine, they both follow the same rules of using uh, uh, syntax and semantics. Uh, I think I'm using that word. So syntax would be the actual word, semantics would be the meaning. So if we look at the gun turt, for example, um, the syntax would be gun and turt. So you would be, I guess there's, there's not a good example. Uh, boy jumps over the fence. So you would have boy jump fence would be your three terms. Jump would be your action. So it would be, you would treat it like a, a multiplication. So we go boy jump uh, we'll go F. And what this would turn into is N V N. And that's no different than saying two times two. 
uh, machines don't really care. You, you get the Santex working on them and they do things. I wrote a, uh, a piece of software to do multiplication and, and division everything and it worked off of the Santex parser. How it worked is that, say you would put in a, something like this, two times two to the power of three, it would look at that and it would treat it as um, expression uh, expression term power and they would take the expression it would turn the expression into basically power term power as well and then power would turn into uh, factor which then would turn into factor one which factor one was just a weird thing where you could take negative numbers which then would turn into number if it did not turn into a number it turned into an expression because how the whole system worked is that it take those two parentheses and it would make sure that those were left out until the very end and it would get hit the end and it would go okay you're in an expression it would funnel it all the way back through the system and what would happen is powers, by the way, as we know, it turned into factorials already. And that term of the uh, the up system was it was pre-handled, so it would it would do the, the whole system. It would give you the number in return. And I got my code working so perfectly that you could literally throw any equation in there that had numbers in it. It didn't do letters because, of course, we I were not required to program it with letters. Anyways, back to our working on our GUI. Um, gotta fix that. Our positioning is good. Let me resize this. I think when you resize it, reinitializes the whole GUI because you see everything disappeared. Um, oh, you know why everything disappeared? Because we screwed this up. Reload profile list. We're, we're going to change this to just, it gives no fucks. Because there's no real reason why we can't just reload the profile list. There, there's, we're going to do everything through prompts anyways. So what you're looking at, this is a get only system. And what I mean by get only system is you're not doing anything. It's, I got to reopen the whole GUI because I broke it. There we go. It disappeared again. Poor K. God damn it. Okay. So we reload profile. Okay, this is not going to be null. We've cre we've created created that. Only thing we're going to do is we reset the visibility. So we reset the visibility of everything by default. We initialize the array if it's not null. Just start marking these. Reset visibility generate array is missing actually you know what we can do with this real quick is just do else generate array if missing and if we we have profile names which we should then we go through profile buttons that length if the button is null, we add the button, we set its visibility to false. Then we, we add it. Okay, this needs to move. Actually, we're going to remove that. We'll, uh, we'll handle that in a second. Um, then if we're underneath the profile, names that length. We set the profile name. We got some scroll index behavior going on, which is, yeah. Problematic. I'll, I'll look at it later. So we got that. So we set its visibility if it's there.
that's a problem. That shouldn't be there. Set enabled. So we go. Okay, we load. And kill the GUI and reopen it. Okay, so we got our stuff there now. That works. It disappeared as soon as we clicked uh, one of the profiles. So what? What the? Uh, what? Uh, where is this being used at? Oh, you're descriptive. Reload profile. Reload profile. Okay, so we have an issue with the scroll index. I'm gonna guess. If we hit this, does it fix it? No, it does not fix it. So we need to come back in here, and we need to see what happens when we hit reload. Get rid of the idea of a second packet ID real quick. Just be like that and just go blarg. I don't care. No, we don't need to reload this because this is this is group related. This is our this is our reload profile list. Okay, so I hit this. We get the packet. Okay. So that's not a problem. So we go to the profile. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. It's the reason why it's uh, derping on me. It's my brain going, hey, you need to test this spot, which is not what you need to test. We need to test this spot. So we set all our buttons disabled, which is going to be quite a few buttons. You don't do stream? Uh, okay, you can't do that. Apparently Arrays don't do the whole stream thing. I was thinking like I could dump that piece of code and maybe make it function a little better. So we hit uh, we hit profile names, go down, go through the button list. Okay, we have a button. Uh huh. Set visible. Cool. Should work. We should be seeing buttons on the screen. This actually needs to be down another. Not that that matters. We're not seeing buds though. You notice that? Nothing there. So what happened? All we did was set the visibility, but in the process of setting the visibility, we broke something. Okay, so I need to see how visibility is used and see if there's some weird, bizarre logic going on. Okay. Oh, well, really simplistic. And yeah, we're not getting anything over here. So we hit reload and we go through this. And it looks like it should work. So what we need to do is we need to look at a profile array, pull button I, set the profile to, visibility set to true, enabled is false. Why is it disabled? Make sure just re-enable re -enable on reload. Maybe, I don't think that's the problem. It just seems weird if that is. 
Still not seeing our buttons. Okay, yeah, resizing the GUI significantly causes it to reinitialize the whole GUI. So yeah, we're just we're flat out missing our stuff over here. What did what did we break? I, I can't imagine we broke something that important. Because we got our draw screen here, we go to the super draw screen, and we go button list, and it just calls draw. And I don't think it got removed from the button list by mistake, did it? Because I'm pretty sure we removed that code that removed stuff from the button list. Yeah, just straight out calls reload profile. We should go through and we set the visibility, we set the enable status. And and what? We we're missing something here. I I can't think of what's going on, because we're everything's drawing. Yeah, we're not getting our, our stuff over here. Both these buttons are disabled. I mean, the buttons work the first time. I mean, the scroll button works. Then you select something and boom, whole thing stops working. The whole system is designed so that way... That's a group. Why am I pegging at that again? Whole system is designed that if this ever ends up null, it's there. And we add it to the button list. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure it's still in the still in the array. If it's not in the array then we uh we just need to add it. I'm gonna hit this right here, and when we hit reload. It got removed from the array somehow, or the button list. Somehow the button list got messed up. But how? Is there a super dot uh, in a GUI call? There is. It's empty though. So yeah, somehow this got, uh, it's getting removed from the array. There they are. Just, I don't know what happened, they got removed. So that means in some part, the GUIs are getting reloaded. I'm not sure where. Oh, that's where we're getting reloaded. Okay. Get rid of that. There we go. We got our buttons now. And we can put like one, two, about two and a half more of these. So that's each one of these is about five. So it's about 10, about 12 more on this list. What well, we set it at 15 is what we set our, our array list at for groups. I can't imagine we're gonna need more. So we got it really nice here. If we resize this, I mean, our buttons blew up. So we gotta do the same check on our button list. I why I don't I don't comprehend why the the button arrays are getting screwed up like this. At least we caught it though. That would have been something really dumb to have to deal with. There we go. That'll fix it. So yeah, they're back now. Uh, we need to find where the where we're calling init, init GUI here though. Yeah, yes, no. Control B, no. You're not gonna tell me, okay. Reload groups, reload profile. There's another init, there's gotta be another init GUI call somewhere in here. Cause that's that's the only time the button list is cleared is in the init GUI. Uh, oh well, we don't have a problem with it. Uh, so these are working now. Um, there's only a few things we got left to handle, and but we're gonna do that in another video because we're at an hour and a half now. So I'll see you guys later.